All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with the ulnar aspect of the hand. And the first thing we're going to draw is the proper palmar digital vein. So we're just going to come alongside. And this will be the easiest thing that we draw today. And I hope you're drawing with me. I don't want to draw alone. And then here's our anastomosis. And what the what they're responsible to do is to drain the adjacent sides of the digits to the palmar venous plexus. So let's go to the next thing, which is to be Grayson's and Cleland's ligaments. So to do this, let's just draw our bones P1, 2, and 3. And of course, you can stop the video anytime to catch up. or draw along, whatever you want to do. That looks like a mushroom. All right, so we're going to draw Grayson's ligaments. Just come along here. We're going to make them extra long to draw, draw our uh, neurovascular bundle behind. And then Cleland's ligaments here. They're oblique. And we're going to draw our artery behind here. And this depiction looks a little messy when I'm done, so I'm not necessarily drawing all this on this side because I know that you know that there's an artery and a nerve on both sides of the finger. So here's our nerve. And let's connect this where it should be in the palm. Okay, so who does what? Well, Grayson's ligaments sit anterior to the neurovascular bundle and their job is to stabilize the bundle during flexion and extension of the finger. And it's doing a good job because I, I can't bend this finger. And then Cleland's ligaments sit posterior to the bundle and their job is to prevent rotary movement of the skin. And these proper palmar digital arteries, they're the terminal branches of the common palmar digital arteries. And they of course run alongside of each digit and I have a great picture. There you go, there's five, you can see it, proper palmar digital arteries. And then I also have one of Grayson's and Cleland's ligaments. And of course we drew ours right on the bone, right? But they really originate from the flexor sheath. And there you can see the bundle behind Grayson's ligament. And here you see the bundle, wait, that's right, behind Grayson's ligament. and the bundle in front of Cleland's ligament. And it's also a precursor to what we're going to draw next, which is the annular pulleys and cruciate ligaments. So to do that, we're going to go to the third finger, and I just want you to start in the middle of the finger, if you can, and draw just straight up to create a sheath. Okay. Now let's go ahead and fill in with our annular pulleys first. We know A1 is just proximal to the MP. It attaches to the volar plate. So it's right here. A2 is at the base of P1 and it goes halfway up. And then A3. A4 is over the middle of P2. And then A5, which is really just a thickening of the sheath, right? And then we'll draw our cruciate ligaments in between. So we have C1 here. 
C2 here and C3. All right, so these have a function. The annular pulleys prevent the bow stringing. And A2 and A4 are the most important for this function. A2 is the troublemaker for trigger finger. And the cruciate ligaments allow the sheath to conform into a flex position, and they allow the pulleys to approximate to each other. And of course, I have some great pictures. This is a dissection. You can see everybody's nice and intact, and they're snugged up against the tendon all the way up to the uh, cruciate ligaments. And then here they've reflected back, which you guys probably have already seen. Dr. Seiler and the other physicians have shown you this in the anatomy lab. And there you can see the decusation between FDP and FDS. All right, the next thing we're going to do is go to campers chiasm. And to do this, we're going to make a group of tendons. FDS, we're going to draw here, bring them up out to the side. And I was saying to do this in a diamond, but it kind of looks like I'm drawing an onion. It's very cartoon-esque, isn't it? So of course, normally this is like super snug, which we'll see in our, our picture here. But the whole idea is just to know, hey, what is the tendon doing? In case you're questioning that. So then we would have the FDP right here, right? And it comes in and then we're gonna reflect it off. And then we know it goes all the way back up here. So we have our FDS and our FDP and the trouble spot because these people don't glide very well after having a laceration. But it doesn't even have to be that. It can be a blunt trauma. And so we need this to move and groove. And it's a big problem area with scarring. They can't make a proper fist if they don't have the glide. And so this spot right here is called camper's chiasm. And I'll show you some nice pictures. I keep trying to save my drawing, but I'm actually making it worse, so I'll stop. Okay, um, here's a good picture. Actually, it's great because you can see here it's split through, through a very tight area, and then the tendon parts and comes back together, and that's that chiasm. That's, that's a trouble spot. And here's another picture I like it for so many reasons. It just looks like the FTP is, you know, puncturing through the FDS. And then it just looks like a mechanical wonder. And uh, it's also in a different language. I can't read. <laughs> I don't know what. Maybe it's Greek or Russian. I'm not really sure. Maybe y'all can tell me. Okay, so we feel good about that, all of our structures that we've drawn so far. So now we're going to move to the honor aspect of the hand again. We're going to go over here and start by drawing abductor digiti minimi. All right. And then flexor digiti minimi. And although he's deep, we're still going to draw the opponent's digiti minimi because I'm a rebel. <laughs> I like symmetry. Now, before we add the thenar muscles, let's just go ahead and draw a lumber pull. I know that we have four, but we're only going to draw one. And we're going to bring that straight up through the center, like this. 
and all the lumbricals approach the fingers from the radial aspect. And they attach, their origin is the FDP. Uh, profundus means profound, means deep. Lumbrical means worm. So you have deep worms in your hand. And so we'll draw a little muscle attachment here. And they're just such a cool muscle group because they are the champions of IP extension. So when they pull, they actually open the fingers, right? They also assist with MP flexion, but because of where they attach on the dorsal hood, they open the IPs. All right, so that's our lumbrical. We're also missing our palmar interossei and our A deductor, but that's another topic. Okay, so let's get back over to this side. So we need to finish with the, what do we need? Flexor pollicis brevis right here, right? And this obviously is the superficial head and abductor pollicis. And then the opponents, which is also deep, but we're going to draw it anyways, right? And you can, when you come over here, you can feel the opponents pretty well. And so those are our thenar muscles. And I have a picture also of the lumbricals. Here we go. So you can see how pretty they are. And you can see along the side how they're going to turn around and insert on that extensor expansion or dorsal hood. So one of our last structures before we stop this part of the tape is Kaplan's cardinal line. And if you hold your hand like this and we find the pisiform and we come across to the abducted thumb and then you come straight down, you're gonna be right in that area where the recurrent branch, motor branch, of the median nerve is. So let's draw that. So here to here would be about here. How scientific was that, y'all? <laughs> All right. So just real quick, if you want to know all the muscles in the hand are innervated by the ulnar nerve except for loaf, which is the index and middle lumbricals, the opponents, the abductor, and the flexor pollicis brevis superficial head, L-O-A-F. All right. I'm going to put this down, and then we're going to pick up on part two.